As far as purpose, every document that we write in engineering and science, be it an email, report, proposal, or set of instructions, carries the purpose of informing. However, different types of documents have different levels of persuasion. For instance, you might write a set of instructions in which the audience does not care about anything other than how to do the process. In effect, the audience is not at all interested in the why, but only in the how. On the other hand, you might write a proposal in which the audience cares deeply about the why behind each assertion. And it is that difference in the level of persuasion that affects the style of the writing or the way that you communicate the content. For instance, think about the paragraphing in a set of instructions. What do you have? In many instructions, you simply have numbered lists on the page. Short paragraphs that are numbered and separated by white space. Why? Why do you have that style in instructions and you do not have that style in proposals? The reason for that style in instructions is that it serves the document's purpose. With instructions, the purpose is predominantly to inform, and at some point, the audience will read a step and then turn from the page and perform that step. Then, when the audience returns to the page and looks for the next step, the number and the white space will help readers find their place. Such is not the case with proposals. Proposals are primarily arguments, and people read those arguments in a much more continuous fashion. For that reason, the paragraphs are longer because the author not only makes assertions, but also provides the evidence and background information needed to defend those assertions. So how does purpose affect us when we write as students in engineering and science? One important effect concerns the depth at which we write. Consider an engineering design report, for instance. In some places, such as concept generation, the writing might be primarily informative. In other words, what concepts did your design team generate? In this section, you might just inform the audience about the different concepts. In other places though, such as concept selection, your audience will expect a methodical argument for why you chose one concept over another. Just saying that one concept scored higher on the concept selection matrix will not be enough. The audience will want to know which design criterion or criteria most affected the decision. In such cases, you're often expected to give a physical explanation for why one concept would be, for example, more durable than another. Another common example occurs during the discussion section of laboratory reports. In the discussion, it is not enough to simply introduce and display data that you measured or calculated in your figures and tables. The audience expects you to explain the meaning and significance of those measurements and calculations.